I'm here today to talk to the Tri-City Rose Society about aphids and maybe powdery mildew and what we can do to control those uh, hazards in our rose garden. And it's unfortunate because of the world situation that we cannot meet together. So we're doing this by video in my garden and hopefully you'll be able to uh, get some good information and instruction about uh, how to control these uh, pests in our gardens. So first of all, we're gonna talk about aphids and what aphids do in our garden. Aphids are a, a sucking pest, an, an insect that sucks the juices out of our roses and they like to suck the juices out of the very tender top shoots of the roses as they're beginning to develop. And right now, this time of year, when we have warm days and cool nights, that is when the aphids are particularly abundant in our rose garden. So you've all probably seen them and you've used different methods to control them. So we're gonna talk about control methods. What do we do to uh, uh, control aphids in our gardens? So you can do everything from nothing to uh, some people that say, if it flies, it dies. And, and uh, most of us are somewhere in between that. So uh, some of us have been talking uh, about what's happening in our rose gardens with, uh, with aphids. Now, uh, one of the products that I like to use is this product called neem oil. This is a concentrate. And in order to use this, I have to filter it because there are plant seeds and plant material in here that will not work in a, will plug up for, uh, I should say, a sprayer. If you're using a handheld sprayer or a backpack sprayer, this is a concentrate, it has to be diluted. And in, in doing that, I have uh, filtered it through a, a kitchen strainer, one, uh, just a small strainer, and then also through a piece of a coarse cloth to get the plant materials out of it before I mix it up and spray it in my garden. Now this is, says here, one to two ounces per gallon to use. And that is what I use about one and a half uh, ounces per gallon and spray, spray it on my plants and it smells really good. It, it has a very good fragrance. Um, but uh, the, the precautionary statement on here is caution. So you need to wear gloves, you need to protect your skin and your eyes and uh, don't, don't uh, get it on yourself and then uh, wipe your face with your hands or whatever because it, it can be harmful uh, to you and if you get it in your eyes and stuff, it will cause damage. The label also says here that um, don't spray it on the active period when bees, when your bees are around, your honeybees or bumblebees are around in your garden because it will cause, or will kill them if they get direct contact with this material. Some other products that I have used as well, one of them is insect and mite control. And I only use this because I had some thrips infections in my blooms that were causing the blooms to kind of um, not open correctly. And it's because I had a, a pretty uh, thick infestation of thrips in some of my blooms. And so I used this and it takes pretty good control of them. But aphids, it will work on aphids as well. There are a number of products on the market, as you can see down here, that uh, that are that will work on on aphids uh, if you if you're inclined to use uh, insecticides then any, almost anything that you can buy in a home home garden center or in a nursery in their sales uh, department will work on controlling aphids all you need to do is just read the label now one other thing that Jolene and I have experienced is that Aphids can be controlled naturally. In other words, you don't really have to do anything other than perhaps if you want birds, the little birds, the wrens and finches and sparrows around that are going to eat the aphids uh, from the rose bush, 
then you probably need to have a bird feeder or something to attract the birds so that they are in your yard and eating and feeding. And they love these nice juicy little aphids in the, the early mornings and uh, later on in the afternoons, they like to get out and feed, and, and particularly feed on bushes that have an abundant supply of aphids. They just love it, and that's one thing you can do. The other thing you can do, excuse me for a minute, is just take a garden hose with a nice, strong pressure of water and wash them down. And that is going to wash the aphids off of your bush down to the ground. And as you do that, what you're doing also is some of the aphids are going to break away from the bush and leave their sucking mouth parts behind. They're toast. They're done. So you can do that. This is a good uh, effective organic method of controlling aphids on your, on your rose bushes. And then also, uh, this helps to clean the uh, the aphid castings off of your leaves and off of your flowers before they bloom. And I, I use this a lot just as, a, as a, a good control for controlling aphids. Now you'll notice that if you do this today, that you'll need to come back again probably tomorrow or the next day, uh, every two or three days, you're, uh, if you want to use that control method, uh, you're gonna need to do it every two or three days until the aphid population is gone and your roses are not so infected by it. So that's basically it. We have a, a wide range of control methods for aphids. You can use commercial pesticides, insecticides. You can use uh, organic materials like this neem oil. You can use just, or, or you can allow the birds and the lady beetles and other insects to eat them and, and control them in that way and uh, you'll find that that's kind of an entertaining method for aphid control and one that's very satisfying if you're if you're doing that or the water spray the water spray is just as organic as letting the birds and others eat it because it's not damaging your environment it's not hurting the plants or the the other animals that would like to uh, come around and uh, work on the flowers that are in your yard. So that's it for aphids as far as I'm concerned. Just use good sense on what you're doing. The other thing that we're going to talk about today is uh, powdery mildew. Uh, that is probably the premier fungus disease that we have in the Tri-Cities that we get on our roses. And uh, the best thing that you can do for powdery mildew is do, to do a preemptive control on your plants to prevent it from occurring on your plants. So uh, first of all, what you uh, we should be doing with our, our plants is making sure that they are, the nutrition in the soil is, is very healthy. You want your plants to be as healthy as possible to be able to defend against those kinds of fungus attacks. So uh, if you haven't yet, I would recommend that you do a soil sample to learn what maybe your soil is deficient uh, in to, and then to amend your soil to make sure that they have the proper nutrients available to them. In my yard, in the last couple of years, I've been deficient in nitrogen and sulfur. So I use a, a very high sulfur content fertilizer, 2100 or something like that, that also has a uh, somewhere around 7% sulfur in it and my plants have really responded well to that amendment. I also have some mag manganese and some calcium that and about every third year or so I will apply manganese and calcium to the soil. Calcium helps the plants to absorb the nutrients from the soil and manganese is a deficiency that all of our Tri-City soils are lacking. So you can buy that, it's kind of expensive, but you can buy it from some of these uh, uh, farm stores that are selling fertilizer to the growers, the, pro the uh, commercial growers. And you can buy it in a 50 pound bag, and it'll last you a lifetime uh, for, for that, but it's expensive. So I would say apply a fungicide now and hope that 
uh, it will help to preempt a powdery mildew attack later in the year. If you see that you have powdery mildew developing on your plants, the best thing to do is get a commercial um, fungicide and one that is rated for, for roses for control of powdery mildew on your rose plants and you can get these on any farm center or nursery, there, there's lots of them. Uh, I, I like the ortho products that uh, are very effective against fungus. If you want to go to a, a very high powered <clears throat> fungus control, uh, uh, this is Banner Max and you can buy this at Rose Mania and it's quite expensive. This is, this is about $70 for this jar of Banner Max and it will last a long time. Uh, you use just very little, mix it with water and spray it on your plants and it will help you to recover from a bad attack of powdery mildew on your plants. It'll also help against black spot. It'll also help against anthracnose, which is another one of the uh, mildews that we get so you can use this. But if you find that your plants are suffering from uh, powdery mildew and you want to use an organic solution, I would say is mix up a, go, go online and mix up, find out the percentages for mixing up um, baking soda and water and then spraying your plants with that. And it's a very, it's a somewhat effective control of powdery mildew but it's not going to be harmful to your environment or any of the insects that you're trying to preserve in your garden. So if you have questions on either aphids or powdery mildew in your garden, go to the, the back page of your newsletter and there are uh, addresses and phone numbers there for consulting rosarians that will be able to help you and di first of all diagnose your situation and then help you control these things that are going to be happening on your rose gardens this year.